Hello people, Suffolk Sport Glide Rider here. In all my videos, please remember that I'm not a professional filmmaker or videographer or whatever you want to call it, and I'm not a professional mechanic either. I'm just surprised at some of the jobs that people take their bikes to garages to get done. I know there are some people that don't like to get their hands dirty, and I fully understand that. So in my series of videos, just to show how some simple jobs can be done at home, saving a bit of time and money and the satisfaction that you've done it yourself. Thanks for watching. Hello people, so this week we're going to be installing the Screaming Eagle Extreme Flow Air Cleaner and that is Harley Davidson part number 2940357. That's 2940357. It uh, comes with comprehensive instructions, four pages of it, which I will have a good read through before we go. Oh, in fact, three pages. So, a good read through that before we go out to the garage. Um, big old air filter. I had looked at various air filters. So I particularly like some of the designs of the Roland Sands ones, but. Uh, they really are so expensive just for an air cleaner really so I've gone for the Scream and Eagle Extreme Flow so we'll have a read of the instructions and uh, then get out in the garage and see what we can do so if um, you don't need to watch me taking the old air filter off please fast forward to around about 13 minutes 30 and then you can skip the uh, taking the old filter off and get straight onto the installation. Thank you. Okay, so here we are out at the bike. You can hear the engine clicking a little bit because I've just warmed it up so that I could do the uh, sound test with the exhaust. Anyway, today we're doing the air filter. Now, reading the uh, work, well, that the instructions that comes with the new air filter, it does say disconnect the battery. And not just disconnect the negative terminal, it says disconnect the negative and the positive terminal, which means taking the seat off. So at the moment, I'm not going to do that because I don't think we're going anywhere near any electric. So why have I got to disconnect the battery? So what I'm going to do is uh, take the old filter off. We'll see if we're near any electrics. And what I'll, if we are, what I shall do then is to uh, disconnect the negative terminal only which should be just a matter of removing the left hand side cover we should be able to get to the negative terminal so watch this space and we'll see that in a minute okay carefully taking off the old air filter so the first thing i can see on the cover these are torx heads so let's see what size we want for that here we are at the outside cover And it is a T25 Torx bit on this outside cover. taking it apart you probably don't have to take them uh, off in the star fashion but that's the way you would do it back up to get the even torque all the way around Three. 
number five and the cover's already about to fall off. So take that out carefully. And there we have our original equipment filter cover. It then says remove the filter itself, which hopefully it's the same size Torx bit. Yes, it is. So there's three screws in here to remove the filter itself. Just crack the Loctite seal, then it should be easy enough to undo them by hand. There we go. And your air filter then comes away with the breather tube. So we gently ease the breather tube off its to breathe the pipes. It does say in the workshop manual to remove the element, pulling out the breather tube as you do so. But that breather tube is well fixed in there, so it's far easier to pop it off of the breather bolts, in my humble opinion. So the next part is to remove this, but to do this we have to remove the breather bolts first. So let's see what size they are. Third time lucky. And it is a 7 sixteenths socket for the breather bolts. Still two tops of the fingers. And obviously doing this, watch the end of your ratchet that you don't end up scratching your tank. Silly little things that can uh, go wrong very quickly. Now keep your knuckles there. I'd rather have grazed knuckles than a grazed uh, paint job on your tank. Number two, crankcase breather bolts. And the back plate then just comes off. Oh, so there's where they were talking about electrics. It will be this cable here that needs tie wrapping out the way. Um, they do provide a tie wrap for it because we have to take this bar off of here. So that's why they said about disconnecting the, the uh, battery. 
But as I say, I shall just disconnect the negative terminal. I'm not going to take the whole lot off. So on these, they are, we're back to Allen bolts on that, or hexagonal as they like to call them. So let's see what size that is. Let's guess at a five. Lucky guess. Number five, hexagonal bolt. Ratchet. They're not as tight as I thought they were going to be. When we fit it all back together, we will have torque settings for everything which is in the instructions. Quite good instructions that come with the new air filter, so we will torque everything up, and everything has to have a touch of blue Loctite on it as well. There. Ideally you should do this with the engine cold, um, not with it warmed up like I've ended up doing. But I wanted to get the exhaust sound check um, before I do any modifications including the air filter, because that might have a slight bearing on the sound that then comes out. Little bit of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Just to give it a pull. I don't think we're going to be able to pull that out with the pliers, so let's get me snips and just cut it off. This is probably why they tell you to disconnect the battery, just in case. There we go, just in case you cut through the wiring loom. Yeah, those uh, cable ties have pushed through and uh, they're like fishing hooks, they're not designed to come back out. But anyway, that's it. Uh, the cable free and the new tie wrap I believe goes in this hole here so it holds it round there out the way so time for a cup of tea read instructions then we'll get back and uh, and start assembling the new air filter in the meantime let's block up the hole make sure no dirt gets blown in Because he's in the garage and there's all sorts of dust blowing around. Keep that nice and clean and safe while I have a cup of tea and read the, uh, the assembly instructions. Okay, so here we are out in the garage. Another nice January day. Some of you will remember from my previous video um, moaning about the blue Loctite coming out like treacle. So I've solved that problem. I've had it in the house for a couple of days to warm it up. So extreme flow air filter. So let's open the box and see what we've got. Obviously the air filter. Instructions which I have read carefully.
main throttle body. Hard to see, but you've got nice engraved Screaming Eagle on the top of that as it sits on the bike, which is quite nice. Back plate part, which attaches in there, which we'll get to in a minute. Also in the box, the gasket, which has got to uh, peel off one side because it's self-adhesive to stick on there. The cable tie, which, uh, although uh, earlier on in the video I showed where it was going to attach, that's wrong. Although you've got the two um, bolt holes there, I didn't realise that the picture, the diagram they're showing in here is actually in reverse. So it's taken as if you're looking from the rear of the cylinders outwards to out to the bike. So we'll do that in just a tick. That goes on the other uh, screw hole to the rear of it. So that just holds the cable out the way. No problems there. The bracket that will eventually hold the filter into place and the bag of bolts as well as a few stickers scream and eagle sticker etc so that's what's in the box so let's do this uh, the cable tie first get that into position and attach the cable out the way now yes, although I said the instructions show about disconnecting the battery um, and I said I might disconnect the, just the negative, well I'm not even going to bother because it's, it's a sealed cable as long as you're careful when attaching this and the, the other bits you're not going to cut that cable so you've just got to be careful with it but the instructions say disconnect the battery if you wish to do that please do so, don't let me stop you so anyway, let's get on and attach this first Okay, so as I just said, the first thing to do is fit the cable tie for this cable. And whereas at first I thought it went on the front of this nut here, in actual fact it doesn't, it goes on the rear of this one over here. So, to make it life a little bit simpler, just going to start the cable tie off but leave enough room to get my finger in there and push that into the back of that bolt head wiggle me, me way up to get it up to where it should be trying to keep my big arms out of the way of the camera and the little dimple on that just pushes in the back of that screw hole Just in there, just like that. So, then just fill around, make sure the cable is okay, make sure it's not too tight anywhere. We don't want anything pulled too tight at all. Just there like that, keep it clear of the cylinder head, although it's obviously going to get warm anyway. That's why it's got this sheathing on it. That'll do it just there. Tighten the cable tie up. Nice and tight, that's not going to move anywhere. Plenty of slack at both ends. And then just need to snip off. the excess end of the cable tie just like that nicely fitted and kept out of the way so moving on
as you can see, with this plate you fit on the back, this will in fact cover all the electrics up once it's fitted on there. Okay, so the cable's up, up out of the way. Next thing the instructions tell you to do is to attach this bracket onto here. And the job after that is to attach the gasket. Well, in my mind, this is going to get in the way of my hands lining up that on there. So I'm going to put that stage off and I'm going to do the gasket first. Quite simple, you peel it off, then you stick it on there. But with that, you know, it's just in the way. So let's see if we can peel the backing off. Should be nice and simple, hopefully. There we go. Backing's off out of the way. Carefully aligning it over the holes. And press firmly into place. So that is the gasket nice and secure in place. Let's open our bag of bolts. So there are breather tubes, we'll put that back in there for the moment. There are breather bolts. back in there for the moment. Let's get those three. So install the throttle body cover to the back plate with self-tapping screws. Which is these four little self-tapping screws here. And they are a Torx bit head. So let's see what size they are. Okay, Torx bit head number T20. To attach these onto here. Obviously being self-tapping you do need a bit of elbow grease to get them started. There's the first one started. started before tightening them up. There's no torque spec for these ones so it's just get them in there and do them up. And these are quite tough cookies to do up. But we're getting there.
Last one. And just to make sure, one final check on all four of them. That's it, that's them done. Them done, gasket done. Right, now we may as well just start focus on the, the bike because that's where all the work's happening now. Hello folks, had completed this and uh, just reviewing the video I realised a bit had been missed out, the, the camera had turned itself off. The bit you missed out was installing the back plate onto the throttle body. There are two rubber washers that go on the back, it's, it's quite simple to see them when you do it, two rubber washers go in the back of the breather pipe tubes. You then put the back plate against the throttle body and install three screws, but only so it's enough to hold it on there. Then install the, uh, the breather bolts through here and we torque them up first, then torque the others up, but that bit will be coming in a minute. So the rest will follow on very, very shortly. Sorry about that. And look at that on the diagram you can see what I was talking about you just missed this is the main back plate and that number five there are two rubber washers and they go on to a little indented bit on the rear of where the breather pipes go put that against it and then the breather pipes go in through the front of the holes all put on with uh, blue lock tight of course So it says 22, 22, 24 foot pounds or 29.8 to 32.5 Newton meters. So I shall set this to 30 Newton meters. And the idea is do them at alternative, at alternatively so that you get them torqued down at the same time. the left one 30 newton meters so now we can go ahead and tighten up the three back plate screws and they need to be tightened tightened to 6.2 to 6.8 newton meters or 55 to 60 inch pounds We'll change the torque wrench again. So, three back plate mounting screws tightened to the 55 to 60 inch pounds. So, I've got this set at 58 inch pounds. Once again, like I said previously, keep your hand in front so you don't bash the tank with it now we've tightened the others they're a bit loose we can do them a bit more by hand first Right, 
Ron. Two. Knock the camera. So that's the black back plate screws now done as well. Two 58 inch bands. Assemble your breather tubes. And to make it easier to get them, pop them on there, what they say is to put a slight dob of oil on the end of the breather pipe. So you take your oil can, put a, I find it easy to put a dob on your finger because it's easier to then get in that hole. Just put a slight dob of oil around that which should then enable the, because there's quite thick rubber that, so it should enable that to uh, pop on there a bit easier. And that then, there's a groove there to slot that in. Well, yeah, I presume they're in. Can't go any further. The metal plate's in the way. So, yeah, it's flush with the metal plate. So it must have popped home. They are a nice, tight, snug fitting, but that's what we want. And uh, that shows the quality of the product, really. The fact that everything's nice and tight and fits well. Okay, so that's the uh, the bre crankcase breather tubes all fitted. Almost there. So next bit is uh, apply Loctite to the threads of the filter mounting bracket screws. Filter mounting bracket. Filter mounting bracket screws, three off, they got a bit of red stuff on them already. But it can't harm to put a little bit of dob of blue on as well. Thought it'd be that way, presumably fitted that way so that the Harley symbol goes towards the top. And these again are number four hexagonal bit. And these again screw into pre threaded holes. do these up by hand first but then 
sure they must have a torque setting, yes. Same as the last one, 6.2 to 6.8 newton meters, 55 to 60 inch pans. So that's quite handy. Let's do them up a little bit first. They are fairly tight because obviously they're going into pre-drilled holes. There's all, already a bit of paint in there. So that's why they're a little bit stiffer. Now that one's eased off so that's gone through the paint there. So hence the lock type will hold it instead. Same with that one. And that, so we're close enough to use the torque wrench now. And same as the previous, uh, we've got it set on uh, 58 inch pans. So that one. That one. And that one. All done. So final thing, apply Loctite to the air filter mounting screw. Apply the air filter. Which comes pre-oiled. So no need to oil it yet for quite a while. Uh, we've got a Harley symbol so I'll stick that at the top. On there like that. Mounting bolt into there. This again is a Allen bolt. I didn't check what size. It's quite a big one by the looks of it. And this again goes to 55 to 60 inch pounds. So once again we'll do it 58 inch pounds. Size 8 Allen bit to 58 inch pounds, but let's just do it up a little bit by hand first. Oh, that's a long old thread. Let's 
There it is there. 58 inch pans. So that, my friends, that is the Scream Eagle Extreme Flow Air Breather. All fitted. Let's pull the camera back a bit. I meant to measure it before I started to see how much it stuck out compared to the original, but I forgot to measure it. But looking at it, um, I don't think it sticks out any further whatsoever. So, jobs are good in. So, having emailed Vance and Hines to ask if I needed to remap the bike, and they said yes, with the standard map that I've already put on, they sent me the link to the actual FP3 manual which says all FP3 maps are dyno tuned for high flow intakes if you have a standard intake flash the map for your exhaust with a high flow intake the ECU will trim the map automatically as you ride along in other words it learns as you are riding so in other words already having already mapped the bike with the stock air filter I need to remap it with a high flow air filter and ride along again for it to learn that. So it, it needs to learn it can now have more air. So the answer to the question, do I need to reflash, um, was yes. If you don't have an FP3 or other tuner, you need to get Harley uh, dealer to remap it for you because it will need some sort of remapping so it knows it's got to suck in more air. So, in a nutshell, if you've installed the FP3 at the same time that you've done the uh, air filter, you only need to flash a map once and it will learn how to breathe with that new air filter. But if, like me, you've been running it for a while with the FP3 with a standard air filter, it had learnt that, so I'll need to reflash it again. Quite simple to do, though, as uh, you saw in the FP3 episode. Not a problem. Okay, so uh, bike has been remapped. Downloaded the new map. So there we go, engine remapped and uh, runs nicely I think. So thanks for watching again folks, I uh, hope this has been useful to some of you. Things, But it's not a great struggle really, just take your time, follow the instructions and we all get there. And uh, yeah, can't wait to get out once the temperature warms up a bit. We were minus six uh, two nights ago so hopefully we get a warm up soon. That was at night though, yeah, during the day we got up to only minus two, so. But uh, I'm not as hard as I used to be, especially with so much salt and crap out on the roads. Take care folks, catch you soon.